Hi, Janet with Heather Canyon, and today I'm going to talk about Spencer Precious Opal, where it is, how it forms. So these are a few samples of the Spencer Precious Opal. You can see that they are in a rock, and the way that the opal formed is there was obsidian, which is volcanic glass, and it was deposited in layers um, as, the, uh, as the glass flowed out of the volcano. And then hot fluids from the volcano um, moved through the layers and deposited some silica. And there's actually a couple of different kinds of silica that were deposited. First, we have these shirt nodules and that is microcrystalline quartz, which is um, silica, and they formed within cavities in the obsidian. And then within the core of these shirt nodules, we have the opal. And the difference between the chert and the opal is that opal is a hydrous silica and chert is not hydrous. Um, so technically chert is a mineral, it has a crystalline structure to it, and opal is not a mineral. With the hydrous um, material in there, it makes it not have a crystalline structure. And that's actually what gives it the flash that makes the opal so common. So you can see that in this sample of the obsidian, there's lots of layers of the shirt, but in some areas, the shirt formed very large nodules. These are like thunder eggs, concretions, geodes, all kind of the same concept. And then within the concretion or the chert nodule, you get layers of opal. So this would be like a waterline agate where the um, opal is being deposited in layers within the opening. So there are several different samples here and one of the main things is that the opal, for the most part, is just white opal, and that's common opal, or sometimes it's called potch, and that's nice, but the really um, significant part of the opal is the precious opal, so if I can catch the flash, or some, and that forms in layers within within the common opal. So if you look at this common opal you can see there's a layer at the bottom. That's the one I was trying to catch. And then there's these other layers that are a little bit more glassy looking. And those are the common opal or the precious opal layers. And some of them are thicker than others. And you can see that there's several layers. And sometimes if you get them just right, you can see the color flash in them. So when you are working on this opal, um, the first thing that you will want to do is remove it from the matrix. Unless sometimes people like the matrix also. Um, you remove it from the matrix. And then you can either cut it to expose that layer or you can cut it perpendicular to the layers in sort of a candy stripe. And I'm going to be showing you both of those methods in a later episode. This is one that I've been working on. You can see that I've exposed the color band across the surface. And it's a fairly thick color band. And one of the things about this um, Spencer Opal is Sometimes you can actually get it thick enough where you don't have to back it or stabilize it. 
and that makes the opal worth more. So in the next episodes, we'll be looking at exposing the color bands and then also cutting perpendicular to the color bands. So visit heathercanyon.com to see some samples and also um, to follow along with future episodes.